Que lo que mi gente, today we want to highlight a badass Afro-Latina that's kicking ass and taking names. This is MJ Acosta, she's a sportscaster for NFL Network, and this is an Afro-Latina that you should know. Close to the best on Friday when it came oh, to T.Y. Hilton. But here you stand, 4-0. Pequeños detalles. A los grandes partidos, toda la acción aquí por Telemundo 20. Today we got MJ Acosta here in the house. You are working in a male-dominated industry. Yes. You know, as an Afro-Latina, I'm pretty sure like nobody else looks like you in that in that space. There are very few women for me to look up to that looked like me. Yeah. But from day one, the curl queen, sports queen, was Sage Steele, who wow. works for ESPN. And I got to meet her in person recently, a few months ago, and it was like a love fest. She echoed the same thing that I've been feeling. She didn't have anybody who, when she turned on the TV, was like, well, if she's doing it, that means I have a chance too. So there's more of us embracing the natural hair um, and just trying to, trying to show that there's space for folks who do look like us. Yeah, yeah, and you're showing that you're able to do that. And then how did this all start? I know you were like a cheerleader in the, for the Miami Dolphins. Yes. That's a big difference from going to become a sportscaster. Well, so what a lot of people don't know is that I was already a sports reporter mm. when I made the team, when I made no the way. Dolphins team. So I was doing both. I was able to not only fulfill a dream of mine to be a, a professional NFL cheerleader, but also I have the best scene in the house yeah, at yeah, every yeah. football game. That Miami, is so are you kidding? cool. So I learned more even as a sportscaster from and being on the sidelines because I could hear every single thing. I was right there no on the way. field. It changed so much for me and it really helped me become an even better sports journalist. But eso no fue para Telemundo. I did work for Telemundo, but that was later on that in was... my career. But my first reporting job was in Spanish. Being bilingue helped me tremendously. To this day, it's one of the biggest assets for me as a broadcaster to be able to go back and forth, español, inglés, whatever mm -hmm. you need. I can do it both without skipping a beat. It's oh, been God. so huge for me, that especially me in sports. And when I covered baseball, like you walk into the clubhouse and you know we have so much, not just Dominicans, but Latino players. Yeah. It was one less boundary for me to be able to connect with these guys, talk to them about the game and what they were doing. It's It's been huge. Every time you see sportscasters, siempre son hombres o son hombres blancos. Mm -hmm. Me encanta que tú eres bilingüe. Yo me recuerdo estando en San Diego. And I saw yeah. your face on <laughs> Billboard. And my big old head on Billboard. It was crazy. <laughs> Once I left Miami, I knew that I just wanted to focus on sports. And it's mm. tough to find sports jobs. And one opened up in San Diego. Um, as the lead sports anchor. And so I went and I became the lead sports anchor. So I was taking over for a gentleman who had been there 30 years. Wow. He was a former NFL player and he was oh. fantastic to me. Really was like, you're gonna be great kid. It was crazy, it was a big responsibility and I made a lot of mistakes. I took yeah. a lot of L's, yeah. I'm not gonna front. That's just how you learn by that's doing. Part of, that's part of the process. What was it about you that you feel like they gave you that position? Well, I've always been open to, you, you can't wait until you think you're ready, if the opportunity is there and you're willing to at least put yourself out there and work for it, then do it. Like yeah. you can figure it out if you have the, the basic foundation then you can go and you can do it and you can get after it, but you can't be scared. Nice. Or at least you can't show that you're scared. You I was scared, <laughs> not for nothing. And then a year into it in San Diego, we launched a duopoly at the station. So it went from just an NBC to an NBC and a Telemundo uh -huh. station. Oh, wow. So then I was a lead sports anchor for both. No way. Five days a week doing two sports casts, and it wasn't like, oh, vamos a traducir esto en español. No, it was a completely different audience, a completely different sports cast. So I was putting together these two different shows multiple times a day, and it was insane. You were like two reporters in one. I had two mic packs, two different studios and control rooms that are kind of putting the broadcast out there to the viewers. So I had, on my left leg was NBC, on my right leg was <laughs> Telemundo. Wow. And I would literally run from one side of the building to the other. At 11 o'clock for the news, I had about 60 to 90 seconds to get from one side to the next and like, okay, turn this mic on, turn this one off, and switch languages and go. You're a real one. And it was. Applauso, let's put applauso hey. over here <laughs> in the edit, por favor. I feel like it, it, it's a little intimidating to go. Uh, yeah. So, uno también es siendo Afro Latino. Mm -hmm. Because when we walk into a room, it's completely different when somebody else walks into a room. We know how we look like. Right. You know, three seconds in that we walk into a room, we know people are judging us. Yeah. None of that stopped you when you walked into that space. How was that for you? It was always in the in the back of my mind because you you can't ignore you know what you look like externally. And for me, it was not just my shield, but also my badge of honor. I was like, I'm glad I don't look like anybody else in this room. Like, you gonna notice me today. 
Nice. You're gonna know that I'm in this room and that I'm here to work. And that's what I, I always stepped with that kind of mentality into it. But you're right, every time I'd speak in Spanish or switch, people would be like, Whoop, Whoop. run it back, scratch, <laughs> scratch the Where record. Where are you from? <laughs> or what are you mixed with? And I was yeah. like, well, I'm from the Caribbean, so that's a loaded question. Yeah, We're mixed yeah, with yeah. a lot of stuff. Ooh. It was nice to also kind of educate people and to bring a different perspective to people who thought that Latinos only look like A, B, or C. I love that book. So that means that you took that, you took that into your power. When did you start rocking your natural hair? Because it feels yes. like people that, that rock their natural hair is because they understand and I feel like they embrace their blackness in a yes. way. So when was it that started for Man, you and why? It took a long time. It was two years ago. As soon as I did it, I felt more like myself than I ever have in my entire life. So it took almost 30 something years to get to this point. <laughs> I like how you mumbled it. <laughs> to get to this point where I felt so confident in who I really was. And it, it took moving away from Miami, moving away from my family, to really explore what it was about myself that still needed to come out. And my hair was part of it. It seems so trivial, but it's not. It's yeah. such a huge part of who we are, of who our identity is, of mm -hmm. our, our culture, our background, our roots. As you know, as a Dominican man, having a lot of women around in, in your family, I'm sure. The rizado, the, the relaxer rizado, is relax. like, so my whole life, I can't remember how old I was when I got my first relaxer. Every couple months you go in, you, you touch relax. up the, the little curls, little bitty bees that are coming out from the roots uh -huh. and you press that hair. My abuela, if she was still alive to this day, would probably be like, you couldn't brush your hair for this interview, no, Andre. Like, but I culturally, I see that's it, what it is. But I, and I feel like things are changing. When I go back to the yeah. Dominican Republic, you see a lot of more girls rocking their natural hair. Absolutely. Yeah. Hasta los hombres rocking their yes. natural hair. You know, I feel like there's a movement happening. There is. They're embracing their blackness. It's been such a relief for me, and now I feel like it's one less barrier between me and the audience and me and the viewers and me and just a community of people who need to see themselves. I have dads, like single dads come up to me after games, like my daughter's hair is just like yours. Like, what can I do? How can I help her? Um, young girls, even, you know, coaches in the NFL, like my niece is looking up to you now because, you know, she's a mixed child and, and nobody in her school has hair like hers. And it's, it's empowering. And I, I take that as like, such a good responsibility. I was like, we're gonna be out here yeah. with our curly yeah. crowns and we're gonna thrive and we're gonna we're gonna do big things and show everybody that it's not just, oh, it's okay to rock your natural hair. It shouldn't be okay. Yeah. This is just what it is. It's this what is it is who we are. Have you ever got a backlash because of your natural hair in, in any way? Thankfully not really. And I think it's because of where we are. Because there is this movement, movement. Yeah. like you said, there's a literal law. Mm -hmm. in the state of California where you cannot discriminate against somebody for how they rock their hair. It's called the Crown Act. So you cannot discriminate it's against- It's called the Crown the Act? The Crown Act. No way. Yes. Now, students, employers, no one can be discriminated against for rocking their natural hair in the workplace, at school. It's sad that we need a law yeah. to say that, uh, but I'm but also so happy that it's there. That's a big win for all of it's us. It's a huge win. Huge win. Vamos a hablar la verdad y vamos a hablar claro. La verdad es que, y no es porque es Telemundo o Univision, muchas veces esa gente no nos representa a nosotros. And I'll do a disservice not to ask you this question. Yeah. Cada vez que uno ve, vea la, la televisión, no se veía uno mismo no. como un negro latino. Y cada vez que veía una persona que se parecía a mí, era el que cuidaba. Era la ama la de la sirviente, casa, la sirvienta. El, co el que cocina, lo que sea. Exactamente. Mm -hmm. So, how was it working in that space, you know, yeah. knowing this? Because I'm pretty sure you walked into the space knowing this. H have they ever treated you any different from anyone else or? I mean, not to my face. Yeah. I don't know if there was anything behind the scenes. Thankfully, I think, again, it's, it's a timing situation. I think now there's so many Latinos who are, are being put in lead positions to show that it's not just somebody who looks, um, you know, in the lighter skin tone or who mm -hmm. um, looks more like a Spaniard than yeah. a Caribbean person. Like, it's insane to me that people still to this day think that there's only one type of Latino. It's a very slow turn. Mm -hmm. It's changing very, very slowly. There's not a lot of Afro Latinos who are represented out there. And I'm happy to be one of the few, at least in the States yeah. at a national level. But there's more of us out there really pushing to, to kind of show that not only are we capable we have more to bring to the table but we're here man yeah yeah oh yeah finally estamos <laughs> aquí nosotros también 
tenemos un problema que a lot of times with people that look like us, we feel like we hit a ceiling when we work in these corporations. Sure. Have you ever had that feeling working with them? I mean, there were times where I felt like this is as far as I'm going to grow here. Yeah. Not because of the people necessarily, but just because of the space that I was in. So in local news, you know what the opportunities are, how many jobs there are for sportscasters, and what your bigger vision is. Mm -hmm. I knew that I, one of my ultimate goals as a, as a broadcaster was that I wanted to be on a national network. So I obviously can't do that in local news. So I knew that I had to grow as much as I could, give my best in the time that I was there, but that eventually I was going to move on. I feel like what you're saying is, no era que había un, un CD. Right. Era que ya, the next move is to move right. somewhere else Correct. that's bigger yeah. and better yeah. for you. Yeah. So you, you know? were born here. Your Spanish is dope. Like, <laughs> how, how do you practice Spanish and how do yeah. you keep it like... I was born here, but like three weeks in, we went to the Dominican Republic. My first words were in Spanish. I lived in Santo Domingo until I was three. And then we moved to the Heights, to Washington yeah. Heights in yeah. New York, where Spanish is also the first language that's true, for the background of kids. And it was always Spanish. You walk into the house, Spanish television. Mm. My grandma, till the day she died, barely spoke English. Oh, wow. So, yeah. you know, it, it was, you're either going to communicate with us yep. in this native tongue, yep. or you're going to go hungry. You went uh, from a, a Spanish network to a major NFL network. Mujer, Latina y Afro Latina. Afro Latina. So, yes. triple minoría. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you kicking ass, I'm telling Thank you. Thank you. you know, and it's great to see. But how was it work, walking into that space? It was interesting because I felt like I had to unprogram myself from thinking that I could not occupy space. I had to deprogram myself from thinking, oh my God, I'm just so happy to be here, which I am. And I'm so grateful every single day. But I've also earned it. So, when you walk into that space, a lot of times, you feel like you gotta prove yourself. Mm -hmm. Do you oh feel yeah, that's what it is every day. So the way you prove yourself is by kicking ass. I make sure I over prepare, that I'm ready for whatever they're gonna throw at me, that whatever the analysts ask me, I'm like, I got you, this is why, X, Y, and Z. And so I devour like the research packets they send us. Like I'll spend hours at night. I look like I'm in college, like going through finals, <laughs> like highlighter, coffee, tabs, like notes in the margins, because mm -hmm. I want to be the best representation of myself as possible. So that when my moment does come, it's like, oh, Oh, she ready? As Tiffany had it, oh, she ready, she ready, yeah. she ready. And that's how you take up that space and own it in the most positive way you possibly can. So it feels like excellence. Yes. Be excellent. We're not no playing matter. games in these streets. Like you got once you get the opportunity, it's so hard to get through that door. And once you do, the margin of error is so small. So, so small. You can't fumble the ball. No, of course. <laughs> not yeah, over yeah, here. Yeah. Okay. Consejo tú tienes una persona que are going to go into these spaces, yeah. you know? Nuestro tiempo es ahora. Yeah. This is our time. There's so many more mountains to climb because it, there's just a few of us singing through mm -hmm. it. And yourself included, Gadiel, yeah. because you're putting us out there as well and, and showing people, like, this is who we are. This is what we're doing. Uh, but it takes waves, right? Like, it takes so many, many years of people doing what we're doing. Uh, it's, so it's just keep pushing. Like, yeah. we cannot stop. Now we're getting in there. They're seeing us. They have no choice. That's very true. <laughs> we all gotta do something. I'm doing something. Yeah. She doing something. We all doing something. Oh, <laughs> I was just about to say Tony Peralta. I love his his whole shop. The way he brings the culture yeah. into it unapologetically. Yeah. Oh, New York I live Dominican. For it. This doing is it. Art. Yeah. We try to highlight Tony Peralta as much as we can. I love, love this him. guy. He was like, I feel like we are a graduating class. That's what he exactly. Says. Yes. And then Absolutely. we're just opening the door, setting a pathway for the next mm -hmm. Afro Latinos coming in, yeah. and we here. Yo nada más quiero decirte gracias por venir. Yo, this has been so much fun. I just want to speak from the heart. I just want to let you know that every day that I'm at work and I see you on TV, it means a lot to me. You know, I'm not going to get emotional right now. You're going to make you me know? cry. What you're doing for us is amazing. Just seeing you every day really makes my day. A lot of times I'm in meetings and I see you giving your sports casting and I was like, even though I don't know much about sports, I see myself in you. So gracias por todo el servicio que tú nos estás haciendo para mí y para nuestra comunidad. Thank you. Muchas, tú sabes el tiempo que yo duré haciendo este maquillaje. Tú me vas a llorar. Follow like.